Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be showing you guys step by step how to make a chicken hatching tutorial. Now obviously this is very stylized and this is not what a actual chicken hatching looks like but it's the whole point here. We're doing something stylized and creative and I actually have done a tutorial like this before but I didn't actually really cover how to do the chicken and how to do the animation so that's what this is also going to include. So I'm going to show you the whole process and my original video that you just saw there as well is just kind of one that I went and added some extra details to. So the main thing we're going to be doing here is just the egg, the chicken, the animation, some lighting, some materials, but you guys can go ahead and add your own environment and own textures and stuff to it afterwards. And just real quick, if you ever want to take your Blender skills further and you want some high quality courses, you can look in the description below and you can actually use my link to get one month of free Skillshare all in the description below and you can even check out once you do that some of my courses they're all blender at the moment and they take you step by step from making some really awesome projects and it comes with all of the files and resources and it's just really cool so far i've had hundreds of students and the feedback has been fantastic so in the description below and let's get started with this tutorial so first of all you're going to want to get yourself a picture of an egg um, just go ahead on to your search browser and find one hopefully one that doesn't have too many reflections or too many shadowy areas and has enough resolution. Um, there are plenty to choose from. Once you find one, just put it somewhere, for example, on your desktop. So I found one on the internet and I put it on my desktop. Okay, so once you have that done, you're gonna jump into Blender. Let's just select all the default objects and press delete. We're now gonna go into our front orthographic view. We're gonna go shift A. And we're gonna add in a UV sphere. And let's go, while we're still in the front of graphic view, take your egg image and just drag it into your Blender scene, whatever one you may have. And then you're just gonna go G, Y, and move it back. Go back into your front of graphic view and then move it. And then try and move it to where your sphere is and scale it up so it's roughly the same as the sphere at the base. It doesn't have to be perfect. Once you have that reference, you're gonna tab into edit mode with your sphere selected. Select the top verts, and then you're gonna to go to your proportional editing. And then you're gonna go G, Z, and move it up. And you're gonna roll your middle mouse button to create an influence. So increase it, let's move it up like so. And now we have something that looks like an egg. What you're gonna do is you're gonna tab back out. You're gonna right click, go shades move. Go to your modifiers. Let's give this a subdivision surface modifier. And let's come to the drop down and apply that. So now we have a lot more topology as you can see. So what we're gonna do as well, in object mode, we're going to go to our material properties. We're going to go new and we're going to create a material called shell. And what we're going to do is we're now going to go into our UV editing workspace. And we're going to go over to our material properties again. We're going to come here to the base color, click on that, and let's give that an image texture. Come to the little drop down, and because we've dragged an egg image into our scene, we should see egg. If you don't have it, you just go to the folder here and go open and find your egg image wherever it is on your computer. And then over here, you're gonna see your image. What you need to do over here in this window is press A to select all of the topology in edit mode. And then you're gonna go U and you're gonna go project from view. And then over here, you're gonna select this and move it around, scaling it up to match it up to the image over here. Then over in this scene here, you can press Z and go into your material preview tab back out and now you can see we have a rough egg texture in here. Now from the side it breaks down a little bit so if you wanted to you could get multiple references and project them from different angles and then kind of projection paint them on or you can do procedural material. In this case we're only going to be seeing it from the front so for me it doesn't really matter too much. So let's go back to our layout. Let's delete this reference in the back and now we have our egg material here and our egg. So we're gonna select the egg and go G, Z, and move it up till it's sitting on the floor, like so. We're also gonna go Shift D to duplicate it. That's really important. So now you can see we have the sphere, which is our first one. Let's double click on that and call it egg. And let's click, double click on the second one and call it egg spare. That's gonna be important later. And with this egg spare, we're just gonna press, with it selected, we're just gonna go M. We're gonna go new collection. Let's just call it um, other. You can call it whatever you want, just the other layer. And let's come here and just turn it off for now so we don't see it. So now what we have is our egg over here. So now we need to split this in half. So we're gonna go Shift A. We're gonna add in a plane. We're gonna go G, Z, move up our plane and then S to scale it up. Tab into edit mode, right click and go subdivide. Under the subdivision tab here, let's just make that something like 15. And now what you're gonna do 
you're going to tab back out, you're going to go to your modifiers and let's give this a displace. Go to your texture properties, go new, and then over here under the type, let's give that a cloud. And now we have some displacement over here. What we're going to do now is we're going to go to our modifiers again. And with this one, we're going to give it a solidify. And we only want it to be very slight. So let's give that a very slight thickness. So something like 0 0.001 millimeters. And let's come and now grab our egg. Let's come to our modifiers. Let's give it a Boolean. Click on an eyedropper and then select this new plane object. And now we have it cut. So if we grab this plane object and press H to hide it, you can kind of see what's going on over here. Okay. So with that done, you're going to select the egg. You're going to right click and go shade smooth auto. So you can see it a little bit better. And that's looking good. Once you're happy, you can come select your egg, come to the drop down and go ahead and apply that Boolean. And now you have that done. So go Alt H to bring back this cutter object, select it and press delete. Now you're going to select your egg in a tab into edit mode and you're going to select a vertex on the bottom bit and you're going to go control L or command L that'll kind of select the whole thing. But let's just turn off our proportional editing first. So you can see here, this is kind of what I mean. We have the whole bottom piece and then we're going to go H just to hide that. We're now going to go control seven or command seven to go into our bottom orthographic view. And we're just going to come here to our face select option and just select these faces in the middle like so, and then go control plus to grow the selection till it touches this outer edge. And then while you're still in your bottom orthographic, press C to bring your selection tool up, grow the brush, and then just select all of these faces in the inside like so. Okay, so as best you can, just select those inside faces, go around making sure they're all selected and then go X and delete faces. Now what you can do is you can go Alt H and now what you're going to do is you're going to select the top bit and go control L and then go H to hide. And now let's go to our top orthographic view by pressing seven. And let's just from the top view, press C to get the selection tool and just very carefully select all of these inside faces and go X and delete faces. And now you can see going around, it all looks clean. Alt H to bring it back, tab back out, go to your modifiers and let's give this a solidify. And this is really important. In fact, let's go over to our materials for now. With the shell material, let's just go down to its viewport display. Let's give it a shell color so we can see it. Then let's click plus and create another material and go new. Let's call this inner. And now let's go to our modifiers again. And you're going to go to materials. And then you can go material offset. You're going to increase this to one. And that's now going to make the inside white as you can see in there. And what that's also going to do, if we go here to the rim, we can increase that. And now it has that same property. This is kind of similar to how we work in Houdini. If any of you have ever used Houdini, but anyway, that's besides the point. What you're going to do now is you're going to come to the drop down and apply that. And now if you tab into edit mode and you select one of these shells and just hide it, you can kind of see we now have that inside material like that, which is exactly what we want. I could have probably made this a little bit thicker, but you guys kind of get the point. So I'm going to go Alt H, just bring that back, tab back out. So now what we should actually do, I think we're going to tab back in there. Just select a top face here, go Control L, make sure the whole top thing is active. Then you're going to hit P and you're going to separate by selection. You're going to tab back out, and now this is its own object. Make sure, first of all, you go to Edit, Preferences. Go to your add-ons and then under your search here, just type in fracture. And if you don't have cell fracture enabled, you can see object cell fracture. Make sure to click on a tick here and enable cell fracture and then close. Now with this done, you can select your egg top bit. Press F3 on your keyboard and type in cell. And you should see object quick defects cell fracture and click on it. And there are a lot of settings which I won't cover today. So for now, let's just click on OK and use the default settings. And bam, now it's fractured all of these. And you can see all of these fractures are selected by default. So with them still active, you're going to press M, new collection. And let's just call this frac for fractures. Go OK. And now for, we can just quickly turn them off by coming over here to frac. Select the original, which is still here, and just press delete to delete it. And then bring back the frac layer. Now you can see we have all of our frac fragments here. What you're going to do is you can press A to select everything, right click and just go shade smooth auto again, just to auto smooth it. And now you can see it's looking a lot better. 
So the idea here now is to take our fracture layer, let's just drag that collection up to almost the top, so it's underneath our main collection. So we have our main collection here, which has our shell. We can turn that on and off. In fact, let's just double click and call it bottom shell. Then we have our fracts here, which is our frac fracture, and we can turn that on and off. And then we have the other, which is just the original egg here, which we're gonna need as well. In fact, let's just call this uncracked, because that's our uncracked egg. Okay, so we turn these two off, you can see we just have our original uncracked egg. So we now have these three things. Let's just turn off the uncracked for now. And now we can start doing our simulations. Let's just go to our desktop. Let's just save this. I'm just gonna call it egg hatch. Go save Blender file. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go shift A, we're gonna add in a plane. Make sure this plane is dragged to the bottom shell collection, so at the very top. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab it, scale it up. And now we're gonna grab our shell bottom bit here. I'm going to go to our physics. We're going to give this a rigid body. We're going to make it passive. And under the shape here, we're going to make it mesh. Let's select this bottom plane, do the same thing, rigid body, passive. And this time, we'll probably just make it, um, if, if it has any dimension to it, you're going to want to make it mesh. But if it's just a flat plane, you can leave it as convex hull. And then what we're going to do, is we're just going to hide. So we're gonna select this and press H to hide it. Let's select the bottom shell and press H to hide it. And then we're gonna select only the shells. And then holding and shift, just select one fragment. And then go rigid body. And then go leave the type as active. And under the shape, you're gonna make it mesh. And then you're gonna go F3 and you're gonna go copy from. And you go copy from active. And now all of these little fragments are gonna have that exact same property as the main one we had active. So if we now go Alt H to bring everything back and we make sure we go to frame one, we can now hit the space bar and you're gonna see everything explode, which is actually normal, that sometimes happens. So if that does happen, what you wanna do is let's just hide everything else except the shell fragments. So let's just select it all again and holding in shift, just make sure one of these is active and then let's go over to the properties here. Let's just go to the sensitivity. And under the margin, let's just make it 0 0.001. Press enter. And now let's just go F3. And once again, you might just want to type in copy from active. It should already be there because we used it. And then click on that again. Now go to frame one and hit the space bar. And now you can see it doesn't explode like that because the margins were too big between the gap. It just um, was kind of like intersecting and it all exploded. So now we can go back to frame one. Let's go Alt H to bring the rest of the stuff back. Make sure to save and let's go spacebar. And now you can see we have a beautiful fracture. Okay, so in the next bit, we're gonna animate our uncracked egg. That's gonna be important because we wanna hide that at a certain point. And then we're gonna also do the little chick inside and animate that. So that's gonna be next. So what we're gonna do now before we actually make our little chick inside is we're just going to do a quick animation. Let's start by grabbing, um, hiding everything else. And we just want our uncracked egg, so our original egg. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up to frame 20. And on frame 20, we're gonna press I. We're gonna go down and add a location and a scale keyframe. Then we're gonna move up one frame to frame 21. And then we're gonna go S and we're gonna scale this way down. And then G, Z and move it down to the bottom here and then go I. And we're gonna insert a location and a scale. So now if you go over here, you can see if you hit the space bar. In fact, this is still running the simulation in the background. So let's just for now go over to our scene properties and just turn off the rigid body world. Go to frame one, hit the space bar. And you're gonna see all of a sudden it shrinks down. So if you now bring back our other layers, what we wanna do is go to frame one, all right? And in frame one, we still have that spare uncracked egg selected. We're just gonna tab into edit mode. And if everything active, we're gonna go Alt S and just very slightly scale it up. So it's covering everything else and then tab back out, all right? So now what we wanna do is we actually wanna come over to our um, scene properties and go to our rigid body world enable it again, come to the drop down. We wanna to go to the cache and we wanna start the simulation at 21, like so. So now if we go to frame one and we hit the space bar, this is what we're gonna see, okay? Now at the moment, 
um, there is a little bit of a thing where it doesn't quite want to work. And what you might have to do is actually, because as soon as you pause, you can see it is over here. So we're going to have to actually bake this for this to work. But the problem is we still want to do our little chick animation. So for now, even though this isn't really working when I'm running it, we'll solve that later. Okay. So for now, let's just turn off our rigid body world again. Let's just go to frame one and um, let's just hide those fractures for now. And let's just also hide the uncracked egg, uncracked egg. So we only have this over here. So we're now going to go and go shift A. We're going to add in a cube. We're going to take this cube and go G, Z, move it up and then S to scale it down a bit. We're going to tab into edit mode and let's now go and grab this face select. Let's select this face and scale it by pressing S. And E to extrude and S or Z to move it up, S to scale. And then let's grab this bottom face and go G, Z and move that up. And then S to scale that. So we have something that looks like this. Then we're going to go to our modifier. So let's give it a subdivision surface modifier. And you may have to select the whole thing and just scale it up a bit like so. Maybe let's select this bottom face over here. Just go X and delete that face. And we just want to create like a very rough looking shape like this. And we want to make sure In fact, let's just quickly bring back our unfractured egg just so we can see to so make sure this chick will be sitting inside of there and not coming out of that egg. So if that all matches up, we can go ahead and tab back out and let's just bump this viewport level up a little bit. And let's just go ahead to the drop down and go and apply. So now we have something that looks like this and you can now grab so shift alt left click to select the loop of faces and at this point you can kind of stylize it a bit you can make it fatter or skinnier or bigger or smaller um, or just adjust things a little bit so it's not sticking out of the bottom of the egg we just essentially have this kind of round looking shape like this and what we're going to do we're going to in our front orthographic select half of it go x and delete the faces under our modifiers we're going to give it a mirror modifier we're going to enable clipping so it doesn't all come apart. And, and now what we're going to do is we're just going to select some of these faces and we're going to go G and with our proportional editing, we're just going to kind of squeeze them in a little bit. And then in the side view, we're just going to also give this a little bit of shape. So something like this, that looks a lot cuter. And then what you're going to do is you're going to tap in edit mode. You're going to press A to select everything, right click and go subdivide again. And then you're going to go over here to your smooth tool and you're just going to kind of smooth it out a bit. And now what we want to do is we want to come over here on the side and just select about six squares like this. We're going to go E to extrude S to scale. Let's turn off proportional editing for now. And let's just go with our smooth tool. Let's just go ahead and smooth that out. Like so. Let's go X and delete those faces. And then let's go to our edge select. Let's turn proportional editing back on and let's adjust this and just round it out a little bit to kind of make the eyes like so. So this is where we're going to put our eyes in. We're also going to come to our side view, just select these edges here and then go G and just kind of move them in like that. And we're going to tab back out. And now in our front view, we're going to go shift A. Let's add in a UV sphere. Let's move it up and go S to scale it down, right click and go shade smooth. Under our modifiers, we're going to give it a mirror modifier and go to the eyedropper and then click on our bird just to kind of mirror it in our side view. We're going to go G, Y and move it forward. And we just want to kind of create these big, cute eyes sitting in here like so. Once you've done that, select your chick, right click and go shade smooth, tab back in. And now we're just going to build some eyelids around this. So just roughly place all of these edges around the eye like so. Once you have them in place, turn off proportional editing, shift alt left click and select this edge. And then in your side here, come in and go E to extrude like so, S to scale it a little bit. So something like this and then enable proportional editing and let's just adjust that a little bit. Okay, something like this. And then let's turn off proportional editing, select this edge by going Shift Alt, left clicking. Then we're gonna go E to extrude, S to scale like so. And then we're gonna go E to extrude and just extrude that in and S to scale. So now we have something that looks like this and we're going to go and give this a subdivision surface modifier. And at this point you can go further and adjust it even more with proportional editing. I'm just going to keep it really simple for now. So something 
like this should do just fine. Let me bring this out a bit. But you guys kind of get the idea. We're going to tab out now, and now we have some nice, cute looking eyes. So now we have the eyes, and let's go Shift A. Let's add in a cube. G, Z, move it up. S to scale, and then go to your right view. Move it forward. Tab into edit mode, and let's extrude this face over here. Let's bring this vertex down over here like so. And then let's just select the bottom face, go X delete face. And let's go and give this a subdivision surface modifier. Maybe select the back face here and go X and delete that face. So just something like this. And you can shape this beak however you want. So I might scale it a bit over here. And then let's maybe grab the front here and go S, X, and make it a bit narrower. So maybe a little bit smaller since it is a cheat chick. So we'll bring it in a bit. So something like that. Tab back out and then let's come to the modifier here and just apply it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to tab back in and we're going to select everything. We're going to go Shift D to duplicate and bring it down. Turn off proportional editing and let's just go S, Z, negative one and then press enter. And then R to rotate S to scale and then bringing it in a little bit like so. So positioning just another one at the bottom here, something like that. And then because we've inverted this bottom one here, we're just gonna press A to select everything. And we're just gonna go Alt N, and we're just gonna go recalculate outside, just to recalculate our normals. So now with everything active, we can go E to extrude, right click, and then go Alt S and just scale in or out along the normals. I'm gonna go in like so. And then go to your modifiers. Let's give this a subdivision surface modifier. And then we're also gonna just go over here to our face select, and let's just select maybe this face over here and this face over here. And let's just go I to inset and let's inset them both. And let's go E to extrude, right click and just go S to scale and kind of scale them both towards each other. Like so, maybe even a little bit more. Bring them down, so something like this. Tab back out and then right click and go shade smooth. So now we have a cute little stylized beak. And I might grab this and just actually move it up a little bit. And you guys can shape this however you want. I might just, with proportional editing, just narrow it a little bit at the top. But you guys kind of see kind of like the idea of what I'm trying to do here. So now we have our check. And what we're gonna do next is give it some hair particles. And then we'll do some shape keys and animation. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna select our little chicken here. And we're gonna go over to our particle properties. I'm going to click on a plus here and we're going to go ahead and create hair. At the moment it's only on one side so you're going to have to go down to your source and under here you're going to have to go use modifier stack so it takes the modifier stack into account. You're going to come here to the hair length and you're going to drag it all the way down till it's nice and short like so. You're going to then go down to your render. You're going to enable under the path your b-spline Let's increase the samples to three, and then let's go to the viewport display. Let's take that up to three, and let's go to the children. And now let's generate some child particles. We're gonna to go to interpolate it. And for the viewport display, we can probably leave it at 10, but for the render amount, we could um, probably make it 110, just to have a nice thick amount of hair. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go down to our roughness under here. I'm going to come to the end point. I'm going to increase that to give ourselves a nice fluffy kind of hair here. I'm going to come to the ununiform and just give it a little bit as well. And now we have some nice fluff. Only problem is we're getting it in places we don't want it. So let's go over to our object data properties. Let's tab into edit mode and let's just press A to select everything. And let's just go over here to our vertex group and go a plus. And if this new group, let's go assign and all of this active stuff is now assigned here. And then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna select only this eye, the inside of this eye like so. And then we're gonna go ahead and with that group selected, we're gonna go remove. So now if we deselect everything and with this group active, we go select. You can see that only these verts here are active and that's where we're gonna have our hair. So let's tab back out. Let's go over to our particle properties. Let's go all the way down to hair or vertex groups. And then under the density, let's make this group. 
and now we're not getting it on our eyes. Make sure to save as you go. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna go over to our object out of properties again, and this time we're gonna create a shape key, and we're gonna create a basis, and let's go plus and create another one. Let's double click on this and call it blink. And with this blink selected, let's go into edit mode. And now we're gonna make our shape key. So let's select this eye up here, the eyelid. Let's, with our proportional editing enabled, go G. And what you're gonna do is you're just gonna kind of close this eye by bringing it down and bringing it out a little bit. And if you have to grab some of these verts up here and maneuver them a little bit, go ahead and do that as well. We're just trying to kind of roughly close the eye. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. Just kind of dragging these together. And if you come up here and you make this connected only under the proportional editing, you'll find that this is gonna be a lot easier. So you don't have the influence at the bottom and the top at the same time. So something like this doesn't have to be perfect because it's gonna happen very quickly anyway. So just something like that. Let's close it and let's come over here and let's bring this one up, add a little bit. So yeah, something like that. Tab back out. So now if we come over here with the blink in object mode and we grab this value, you can see we have a blink like this and it happens pretty quickly and at any point you could come in here if you wanted to and adjust if you're not quite happy with it even after we've added in the keyframes for animation but you guys kind of get the idea so what we're going to do now is we're going to take this value down to zero and let's come over here to frame 30 and we're going to go ahead and with a value here of zero we're going to click on a little animate property button here they want to come up just two frames to 32 and we're going to drag this value to one and then click on this little animate property here just to add in a keyframe and then let's come up another three frames or so so to 36 and let's drag this down to zero and click on here again to add in a keyframe so now you can see we have a quick little blink now we can duplicate grab these three keyframes and go shift d to duplicate them and drag them anywhere in our timeline where we want to blink, like this. Okay, so let's maybe drag one here, Shift D. You can do this however you want. So I'm just going Shift D to duplicate a few times. You guys can do this as many times as you want. Make it as random as you want. Um, but this is what I'm going to go with. I'm also going to go to my end frame value and make it 150 and leave it at that. So now we have some blinks and that's already going to add a lot more realism to our little chick here. And then we're gonna go and just grab this beak and let's quickly give that a shape key as well. So two shape keys. And let's just grab this key one. Let's go into edit mode. Grab this bottom beak and let's just go R to rotate, G to move it down a bit and in. And now we have a keyframe here that we can animate, okay? I might just actually go to the bases and then just close the beak a little bit more on the basis, not the shape key. So there's a bit more of a difference when we use the shape key. Okay, so I might just have to adjust it a little bit so it doesn't feel too funny. So yeah, there, that's looking pretty good. And now what we can do is we can come here and we can kind of give this a value of zero. Click on the little animate property. I'm on 40 at the moment. I'm just gonna go up two frames and then I'm gonna go ahead and give this a value of one and then click on this little animate property. And then I'm gonna move up a little bit and then drag it down to zero and click on this again. And now you can see we have the beak opening here. And I might just drag these a little bit more apart just so it's not quite as fast like that. And now you can grab this and duplicate it wherever you want. And now you get a little bit of beak movement as well, a little bit of like just adding movement. Now this is really basic. And obviously if you're doing it like a really high end character, you're gonna be rigging this and adding a lot more expression. But this is just something really simple and fun for us for now. So make sure to save. And now we're gonna grab our little chick here and we're gonna to go to our physics and we're gonna give it a rigid body and we're gonna make it passive. And we're gonna come here to the shape and we're gonna make it mesh, okay? We're gonna grab the beak and we're gonna go rigid body. We're gonna make it passive. And we're also gonna make it mesh. Now you wanna enable animated. And let's grab the chick again. We wanna make sure we make this animated here. 
Okay, that's very important. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to frame one. And we're going to come over here to our uncracked and enable that and our fractures as well. So they're all back in the scene, as you can see. And then what we're going to do is we're going to actually just just with the check select so all the items here that make up the check. Let's just click on them here and drag them into the bottom shell collection here at the top. So they're all in there as well. And what we're going to do is we're going to come over to our scene properties. And we're going to enable the rigid body world. And we're going to come here to our cache. We're going to start at 21. And we're going to go to 150 because that's where we're ending at the moment. We're going to save and then we're going to go ahead and bake this simulation. And now that it's finished baking, we're going to go ahead and hit the space bar starting at frame one. And there we have our egg fracturing. And obviously this is not realistic at all. This is very stylized. And that's the whole point. It's just a fun little animation that we've made. So now we have that done. Let's go into our front view. Shift A. Let's add in a camera. Let's move the camera back. And let's zoom out. Let's go control B and drag over our camera to limit the render to the camera. Let's go to our camera our render properties. Let's make it cycles. If you have a GPU, I recommend that you use it. But if you don't, just leave it at CPU. And under our render samples, let's make the max samples 50. Should be more than enough. Make sure to save. And then we're going to go Shift A. We're going to add in an area light and go G, Z, and move it up. Let's get our light settings. Let's make it 250 on the strength and increase the size to 2 meters. We're then going to go Z and go rendered. And then we're going to go into our front view and go Shift D to duplicate. Duplicate the light coming from the side and then Shift D, duplicate one and have it coming from this side. So now we have a three point lighting setup and it should look something like this. Okay, so we have some nice lighting and you can also grab this light over here and have it a little bit more back and then duplicate it. So you also have some rim lighting coming from the back like so, which is also really gonna add to this character. There we go, that's looking cool. So now we have that done. Let's grab our check. Let's go to our particle settings. Let's quickly go down to our hair shape. And under the root diameter, let's just make it 0.3. So these hairs aren't looking as thick. So a bit more fluffy. Okay, that's looking good. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go into our shading workspace, go into camera view and then go Z and go rendered. And let's select a check. Let's go new and let's just call this material check. And let's go to the base color and make it kind of yellow like this and make it a little bit lighter in value. So something like that. And then we're going to come here to the roughness. Let's increase that a little bit so it's a bit more rough. And that's very simple. Let's grab the eyes. Let's go new. Let's just make that black. And let's come to the roughness and drag that all the way down almost to zero so it's reflective. Let's grab the beak and let's just go new. And let's make that kind of like an orangey kind of color. Like so. And let's just bring down the roughness just to make it a little bit more reflective. Maybe something like that. So you guys can stylize this color as much as you want. But that's what I'm going with. And then um, let's just select our egg. Let's just bring down the roughness for the shell just a little bit like that. And I think that's enough for what we're trying to do. And at this point, you can now go to your render properties. You can go down to the motion blur and enable that. And once you have that, make sure to save. And let's just go back to our layout. Let's get a nice shot here that kind of looks cool, something like that. Make sure to save and let's go render and render image. Let's see what that looks like. And here we have it guys. We have one very cute and stylized little chick looking through the egg at us while it's kind of like exploding open. And I think it is just a really fun project. Now I've taken you guys this far. Now from this point, what you're gonna do is you're gonna add a nice environment. You're gonna mess around with your lighting. You can kind of comb the particles a little bit. At this point, it's your job to make it your own. And I like look forward to seeing what you guys make with it. So I'm gonna end the tutorial here. And the video you would have seen in the intro would have been this exact thing here, 
but I would have gone and added some better lighting and made some nice environmental assets. But that is what I've done. You guys can make it your own, like I said. So thank you so much for watching. I really hope you guys have enjoyed this. Make it your own, render it out as a final animation, and then share it on the community. I'll see you guys next time.